Well, good morning. Today is Wednesday, September the 2nd, and it is a joy to be coming to you with today's devotional commentary that is titled, For Whom the Lord Loveth, He Chasteneth. Of course, that's taken from Hebrews chapter 12. But our scripture reading for today is Ezekiel chapters 23 and 24. Now, let me give you the setting. Our scripture reading today brings us to the crisis that Ezekiel has long warned would come. It is the final siege and destruction of Jerusalem, the beloved capital city of Judah, and all Israel. Now, this devotional commentary is going to be focused only on Ezekiel 23. And I would encourage you to take your Bible to look at Ezekiel 23, because I'm afraid the the dynamics of the text might be easily lost in this small uh, devotional commentary that I'm bringing to you. Now, Ezekiel 23 has given us the account of the final days before the fall of Jerusalem and the eradication of both Israel and Judah as nations. It is vivid. It is graphic. Uh, it describes the uh, unfaithfulness, disobedience, the rebellion, of Israel, Judah, and particularly Jerusalem as whoredoms. Now, there are two names mentioned in here because this is a parable. It's a parable of two sisters. The older sister is identified as Ahola, and that represents the nation of Israel. The younger of the two sisters is Aholaba. She is the younger sister, and she is a symbolical name of Judah, the southern kingdom, whose capital was Jerusalem. Now, I understand this might be a little bit confusing, and you need your Bible really to grasp it. But what Ezekiel is doing is given an illustration of the whoredom, the spiritual whoredom, the spiritual prostitution, the ungodliness of both Israel and Judah. Ahola being the representation of Israel is reminded of her alliance with Assyria. Now she had sought Assyria for its strength and its power and rather than turning to the Lord she had turned to a heathen nation and God rebuked that. He was angered by it. Now Aholaba who was no better than Ahola, her sister, in this illustration of Judah and Israel. Aholaba had sought an alliance with Israel, and then she courted the favor of Chaldea, that is the Babylon. You might remember in Isaiah chapter 39 the story about how King Hezekiah of Judah had uh, taken the ambassadors that were sent from Babylon to uh, uh, Judah and had taken them on a tour of his treasuries in both the palace and the temple treasuries. As a result of that, Isaiah had strongly rebuked King Hezekiah and warned and prophesied that the day would come that Babylon, the nation of Chaldea, would take all of the treasuries, would take all of that which was valued in Jerusalem and would take it all to Babylon. And that did come true. Now, uh, when Aholaba, that is Judah, realized the event, evil intent of Chaldea, rather than turning to the Lord, that nation had also turned to Egypt. These lovers, as they're portrayed in, in uh, Ezekiel 23, 22, and 29, Assyria and Chaldea, represented the Babylons, uh, had ravaged both Israel and Judah. And the prophecy was that the chariots, the wagons, the wheels of that great people would strip both Israel, Judah, and the capital city of Jerusalem, strip it bare of all of its wealth and even its people. Now, you might ask, what sins had Ahola and Aholaba uh, committed against the Lord that would justify so great a judgment? And the answer is this. The judgment of Israel and Judah was because those nations had broken their covenant with God and they had committed adultery. The people had defiled the temple with idols. They had forsaken the Sabbath. They had committed all the ultimate acts of wickedness and depravity by sacrificing their own children to the god Moloch. And in the same day, 
in an act of hypocrisy, after sacrificing their children, they went to the temple to worship. God was full of wrath. The destruction of Israel and Judah was set, and the horror of the people's suffering had been determined. As we read Ezekiel 23 and verse 47, the final siege of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar's army would begin, and the days were numbered. Ezekiel 24 and verse 2, we read, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even of this same day, the king of Babylon hath set himself against Jerusalem this same day. Now remember, Ezekiel is prophesying in Babylon. He is facing Jerusalem and Judah. He is prophesying to the people of the captivity that the day of Jerusalem destruction had come. Why did God chasten and punish his people? Not only because he loved them, but so they would know he is the Lord. Hebrews 12 and verse 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. None of us enjoy chastening. None of us enjoy rebuke. But God allows those things in our life to strengthen us, to humble us, to cause us to be more dependent on him, to look to him in prayer and faith. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together is the matter where some is even as you see the day approaching I'm afraid that the churches in America are in for a great chastening before the Lord should come and when God chastens us I pray that we will humble ourselves to him and set aside our pride and know that God chastens us as a father who loves his son I encourage you today, serve the Lord, be faithful. Reminder, today is Wednesday, and we have our, our regular Wednesday night now, Bible studies. Our dinner begins at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, teen activities begin, 6.15, Awana clubs, 6.30, we have our Bible studies. And then at 7.30, when those Bible studies end, for those who are in the choir, there's about 30 minutes of choir practice in the auditorium. I hope you all have a great day, and I hope I'll see you tonight. God bless you. Bye-bye.